This is Dimitri Lascaris reporting from the Handala, the flagship vessel of the 2023 Gaza Freedom Flotilla. And I'm here today en route uh, to Oslo, Norway, with two representatives of the Red Party of Norway. Uh, and uh, the first, please introduce yourself, Hege. My name is Hege Banyolt. And could you tell me what your position is within the Red Party? Yes, I can. I'm a member of the Parliament. I'm actually the chair of the Standing Committee of Education. And uh, Adam, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Adam Saeri. Uh, I am the second leader of the, Nor of the Norwegian uh, Red Party in Oslo. And uh, let's start with uh, Hege. Could you tell us a little bit about the political orientation of, uh, of the Red Party in Norway and where it kind of sits on the political spectrum? I'll try. Of course, it's a socialist party, so we don't agree. <laughs> of course, inside we have many, many different views about the party, but we are a socialist party, a modern socialist party. We are only 16 years old. Um, and it's just recently, the last two years, that we have been more than one in the parliament. And uh, But we are growing all the time. We're becoming stronger, more members, uh, more powers. Uh, so we are in the beginning as a party, but we are an uh, old movement in Norway. And uh, how many seats does the Red Party currently have in Norway's parliament? And what is the overall size of the parliament? We are 169 in the parliament, and we have eight seats. And Adam, could you tell me about uh, the Red Party's activities in Oslo? Uh, where does it fit in in terms of the political power structure of the city? Well, we have a we have a lot of um, type of political situations going on, going around Oslo. For example, um, uh, we are now fighting for free dental care around uh, around Oslo, or at least cheaper for for uh, for, uh, for the beginning, because uh, many people around the world thinks that we have. Uh, we have a lot of things that are free in Norway, for example, free healthcare, free, free, uh, uh, free, a lot of free stuff who goes through the welfare system, but yet we don't have any free uh, dental care in Norway, and it's very expensive. And when you see the situation around Norway where people can't uh, buy food or have to skip their meal because they have to pay electricity bill, the bills for dental care is more, more, more is now more expensive, uh, and the longer you go without going to a dentist, it, get, it gets more, even more expensive. This is the type of stuff we are fighting for: more cheaper dental care, etc., uh, and also um, what do you call non-commercialized uh, welfare? Non-commercialized welfare as well, which we are struggling with. So let's talk about the issue that we're all here uh, to. Uh, uh, activate about, and that is the Palestinian cause. What is the position of the Red Party with respect to uh, the plight of the Palestinian people and how, how to deal with that uh, crisis? Well, in our position here in Norway, we see it as our duty to follow what the Palestinian civil society wants us to do, and that is, of course, supporting the BDS movement. So in terms of the Red Party, we fully support the BDS movement. It's a, it's a, part, of our, it's a part of our struggle, as well as the Red Party's founder, uh, the, Red, uh, the Red Party's uh, members were also the one who formed the first uh, Palestinian solidarity movement called the Palestine Committee of Norway. So it has always been in our struggle to 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 support the Palestinians, support Palestinian liberation, uh, mm -hmm. support uh, uh, support uh, taking our oil oil pension fund out out of Israel, uh, support a sovereign state for Palestine, and yeah. And Hego, what what motivated you to come on the, this particular journey? On this boat, well, um, I've been born and raised in the solidarity movement in uh, in Norway. My parents were active when I was a child, so I always been a part of my political. You know, my heart is beating extra strong for the Palestinian uh, case. Uh, I've been to Palestine uh, twice, but never to Gaza. It's not been possible for me. So uh, this was an opportunity to do it, and uh, just before the parliament closed this year. Uh, we suggested a bill that uh, Norway should recognize Palestine as, uh, as a state. We haven't, and it's also a way to hopefully get some publicity about our uh, suggestion because it's difficult to get uh, the media's attention when we try to suggest things like, I nominated Al-Haq for the Nobel Peace Prize, 
and it's uh, difficult to tell the world about it. Al Jazeera wants it, uh, you know, they make a, a big case out of it, but in Norway it's difficult to wake up, you know, the media and get the attention that we need. So I think things like this, uh, this flotilla is super important just to uh, rem make people remember what's happening in Palestine because right now uh, it's mostly about the war in Ukraine in Norway and we don't talk about what's happening in the Middle East, what's happening in Africa, what's happening other places in, in the world so it's so important that we still have some interest and issues uh, about what's happening in Palestine and uh, it's difficult so we need these votes. Right. And, uh, and Adam uh, Hager mentioned the fact that uh, the Norwegian government has not yet recognized Palestine as a state. Could you tell us more about the government's policies towards the Palestinian people, towards Israel, and what is the Red Party's position about the Norwegian government's uh, policy towards Israel? Well, it's a very interesting question you're asking because uh, for the government, they kind of want to say we hold a position of standing with, uh, with the international law, uh, and then saying we're supporting Palestine. But in reality, the government is actually funding Israel and funding Israeli settler, settler, uh, uh, settler um, movement by, uh, by our oil pension fund that goes to the Israeli banks, which holds the settlements, which makes us invest in those settlements, which is totally illegal according to international law, which we are, by the way, breaking in Norway. So we hold a position. We also we also have there have also been founded uh, in terms of uh, arms deal we have in Norway. We have a one of the uh, I probably think the world biggest arms deal as a, as a nation state. So our when we when when we send weapons because we usually say we send weapons to countries that not usually aren't in war. When we send weapons, that 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 end up happening happening to be sent to countries that are countries that are in war. For example, Israel. We found out that Norwegian uh, ammunition and uh, and bombs have been used in Gaza. Latest, well, latest I found was in 2009, and that's the uh, double standard morality that we hold as a so-called peaceful peace nation that gives Nobel Peace Prizes and stuff to to people and try to make up a great morality that Norway holds right. a great position, yeah. Right. And Hegel, you mentioned the Ukraine war. My understanding is that the Norwegian government supports a policy of sending weapons yeah. uh, to the Ukrainian military, that, that's right? Yeah, there is. And uh, in, in your opinion, is there any rational and moral way to reconcile the Norwegian government's position with respect to arming Ukraine and its position with respect to the Palestinian people. Oh, the biggest <laughs> debate inside the Red Party this year <laughs> and last year. Uh, but of course, it's um, it's tough when you've been uh, part of the Solidarity Movement for a long time to see how uh, different the government uh, treated the, uh, the different wars because it's a war. It, it is occupation, but also a war going on uh, against the Palestinians. So. Uh, I think it's important that we, we, of course, need to support everybody who's fighting for their freedom. Uh, if it's the Ukrainian or the Palestinian, of course, they are humans. They need our support. Uh, but it's um, it's difficult sometimes to see that it's uh, much more, you know, will and it's easier to get the support when it's happening in Europe. And uh, when it's not happening in Europe, well, we close our eyes and it's other issues that is more important for, you know, uh, how you as find the conflict define how our government uh, sees the conflict. So, yeah. And lastly, I'd like to ask uh, you, Adam, about uh, the Red Party's position with respect to NATO. Could you tell us what it is and what is the underlying thinking behind that position? Well, first and foremost, uh, we look at NATO and uh, NATO as a so-called superpower, a great power that holds a position of influence in other world countries. It's not necessarily a defensive force for the Western society, for Western countries. We have seen that uh, in Libya. We have seen that in uh, we have seen that in Afghanistan and in Iraq and so on. So for us, we see we see we don't want to be a part of NATO. We think NATO we think NATO uh, as much as Russia and China are have their own colonial interest. So that's why that's how we see it. We want to be we wish to one day to be independent outside of NATO, so we don't uh, commit more crimes against humanity. As well as I wanted to put this out and it's very important. Norway as the uh, who 
gives out Nobel Peace Prizes uh, around the world has been the, uh, are, are the same state nation that, that, has, that has bombed Libya probably the most, that has participated actively more than most country, NATO countries that was participating. And that is very important of our double standards when we th when we say that when we when we think about NATO or yeah. right. well, thank you very much, both of you, for speaking uh, with me here today. And it's been Dmitry Laskaris reporting from the Handala en route to Oslo, Norway. Thank you so much for watching the Real News Network, where we lift up the voices, stories, and struggles that you care about most. And we need your help to keep doing this work. So please tap your screen now, subscribe, and donate to the Real News Network. Solidarity forever.